whatever. That apocalyptic one. Was it? Is that what it was? Oh, it's in know. Norway. The seed. We're talking about the seed bank, everybody. The seed bank. It is exactly what it sounds like, a secure seed bank. Oh, it's on a Norwegian island. Yeah, it's... And basically what they have there is every type of seed. And is it in case catastrophe happens and we need to regrow our earth or what? They've actually... Global uh, Seed Vault, that's what it's called. Yeah, they've actually uh, gone into that and um, pulled out seeds and duplicated them because of uh, the shit going on in Syria. (laughs) <laughs> There's just no food there. Oh, so they need to go grow shit? Yeah, they've actually pulled out the seeds that like work best, like the varieties of wheat and everything that work best uh, around there, and because they're planning for the eventual resolution of all that good shit. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people think it's for global catastrophe, but it looks like it's just a safety against accidental loss of diversity. Yeah. Could be is, for anything, really. Yeah. yeah. So, like, so they clone this fucking seeds? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just yeah. like they do sheep and goats and horses and, and people. And yeah. me. It's super relatively easy to clone plants. And people. Animals. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a clone. That'd be tight. Could you imagine if there was multiple of each of us, how much shit we'd get done? In the meantime, we'll just keep Probably trucking. Probably more. <laughs> <laughs> our versions of, our other versions of us would just fuck off even harder. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we didn't really have a topic today. Um, seeds. Uh, yeah, seeds. We're going to talk about well, seeds. Well, I mean, we did have one uh, one girl on uh, the YouTube ask about your guys' travel experience. Okay. You guys are much more traveled than I, so I'm just um, going to hang out and do my thing and okay. look at the new lights we have. I've learned a lot about traveling. It seems like I started traveling often about four or five years ago, like out of the country, and I used to be really stupid about it and spend way too much money. And now it's Chloe has seen firsthand. I'm, I over plan mm. in a sense, mm-hmm. but you and I are kind of similar like that. Yeah. To a degree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys' motivations and travel style are very different too. Yeah. I travel to run the fuck away from life. That's, you know, that kind of is what it turned into for me afterwards. I used to just get away from me. Uh-huh. And then I really be actually right face has a lot to do with this. I'm super into architecture and like ever since I learned a lot about like buildings and stuff from my face, I got really into architecture. Mm-hmm. So when I choose where to travel, I kind of largely base off, base it off. Like I used to kind of travel for food a lot. And now I know hmm. that I'll experience food anywhere I go. So I like to see like old churches or like gnarly buildings and stuff like that. Whereas Chloe's very into the beach. God, I love the beach. <laughs> Chloe, I love the water. Chloe wants to go to paradise and lay around and mm-hmm. drink things out of coconuts and that sounds like hell on earth to me it's amazing to me yeah see and it just kind of like so let's talk about <laughs> going on vacation to do nothing or going on vacation to do everything, everything. and I that's fine i can do both yeah mm-hmm. and that there's a, there's people who don't want to travel with me because they know if they travel with me it's going to be fucking up at 6 a.m every morning see the entire city on foot the first day we're there and then do adventure after right. adventure, which a lot of people, that's not their idea of vacation. And I started traveling back in like the MySpace days. Right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right <laughs> face knows all about the MySpace I, days. That's, that, that was my area era of being internet famous. I will <laughs> say that for how much shit I did in my life. When it came to the internet, I was very inexperienced. <laughs> like, I had no concept of what I was doing and how dangerous it was. But I would like meet people in MySpace and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna fly there and stay with you." No, that was like mm-hmm. a that was like around the time. Uh, I know a couple people that got catfished. No, but I would like, like fly really? off and stay with yeah. strangers. I had yeah, a- that's actually I I almost moved in with a kid that um, he uh, I had one friend that had been talking to this girl. And she had just moved to Reno, and she was, like, smoking hot and everything. And then um, this kid I was supposed to move in with was like, oh, yeah, dude, like, I met her, and, like, we've been hanging out and everything. Then somebody found the girl's real MySpace profile, and she's like, hey, you know, she lived in L.A., and she's like, hey, you know, I someone brought this to my attention that there's a <laughs> fake profile out there. And so everybody's like, so you met this girl, huh? Like, to this to this kid. Yeah. And, uh, 
that's kind of one of those instances where we realize, oh, like this dude's a habitual liar. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, no catfish, huh? No, but I would just leave. I would go and stay with strangers in other countries. Like, <laughs> no qualms about it. Just go and do it. And I would be like, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Like, I don't think, I think it'll be fine. And That's I would just, gnarly. and I would just do it. And I would, I have not ever had a bad experience. I've only had weird experiences, like, within the States. Hostels scare me. Like, yeah. see, I have wanted to stay in a hostel, but I'd rather stay. Movies. I would rather stay with a stranger than a hostel. So, yeah, well, when we, well, I do the Airbnb thing now, but even like. I have never done it. See, every time we travel, we did Airbnb in Barcelona, Lisbon, Croatia. We're doing South Africa. Like, I kind of switched over where we did the hostels. The very first time I ever went to Europe, we did all hostels. Stuff freaks me out. And it was very. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. I feel like it's no, robbery, it's, rape, murder central. Well, they even it's have, probably not, but which, that's which just how cool, I feel. Because that could still happen with Airbnb, but, you know, they'll <laughs> apologize <laughs> right. and give you a refund. Right. Um, <laughs> get the like well, we, did the ho- we did the hostel in Amsterdam. And that was like a party hostel where everybody there was there to get fucked up. And I was like a week sober. Do you have like a room that you can lock? No, okay, so. And like put your stuff away? Do you, Is it like have, a communal there's like, shower? There's, where yeah, there's commun- like, showers are, all the bathrooms and stuff are communal. But is it like a, <laughs> like 20 people in it, an open shower? Or is different. it like a door? Every, it, they're all different. I mean, the hostel I did in Belgium, in Brussels, we had our own room. And our room shared a bathroom with one other room that it was, they paired girls together. Like they asked you when you got there. That was a very nice hostel though. We also had like a kitchen in our room. It was basically like a house that somebody had just turned the individual rooms into rooms you could kind of stay in. Okay. But they also outfitted each of them to have like little kitchenettes. And I feel like I've seen hostels where you've had to bring your own bedding. That's so funny. Like they weird. didn't have sheets. You had to use your own. Maybe like a sleeping bag, I guess. That was, sounds like it'd be in like Slovakia or something. I've looked into it. I think it was in Sweden. That's really weird. We stayed at a yoga hostel in Copenhagen, and it was like two rooms just filled with 20 bunks. Yeah, see, that freaks me that out. Was really that was really weird. It's like Stavie Central. Really cool, man. You but it was like a very military. nice hostel. It was like a yoga wellness hostel. It was really cool, and they did yoga all day. And um, there it's was a, like a communal kitchen. It's a little germy to me. Yeah, it was really nice, though. And then the bathrooms. Can't promise other people's hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in that one, they had lock boxes under each bed. So the beds were, like, built into the walls. And under your bed, you had a drawer that you got a key to that locked. And you could lock all your stuff under your bed. See, that's okay. The I hostel that. we stayed at in Amsterdam, we were in a room with four bunk beds all foreign people were the only American. Well, I mean, I guess we were foreign. Nobody spoke English. Totally foreign. It was a complete shithole. And then there was like lockers in each room that you could put your stuff in a locker. Mm-hmm. That was, t- that was, you had to bring a lock. Europeans though. like, and that's just how they roll. Yeah. So it was it's a really, lot easier for them. They come yeah. over to the States. Yeah. But that's the, we noticed every, like all the Europeans or Australians or anybody we met that was staying at that hostel in Amsterdam, they brought everything with them every day. This they is like, a big, big generalization, people. Yeah. <laughs> Just, they, don't take it personal. Well, I'm saying anybody, no, I'm all saying. All Europeans are like that. Yeah. They, <laughs> they brought I everything. See with, the comments. They brought everything with them in their backpacks. Like when they left every day. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking carry my backpacking backpack around Amsterdam. Yeah, see, that's that's the yeah. same I want to be when I travel. I want to, like, have a home base where I can leave my shit and then go right. do whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, then I switched to Airbnb after that experience completely. I will say, along those lines, sidetrack, when I was in the Dominican, mm-hmm. I did that all-inclusive resort thing, which you think Ugh. it would be horrible. I thought it was amazing. I wouldn't do it every time I traveled, but yeah. it, there was a lot of convenience to it. Because it was food and everything, right? Food, everything. Yeah. Entertainment, lodging. It's like a cruise. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and the food was good. A, yeah. And the people were amazing. But I would get like one drink, two drinks in, and then I would just leave my phone on the beach, like yeah. on the table, and then I'd walk away for like an hour. And I did this multiple times a day. My shit was always there. I was shocked. My shit was always there. Like, no one went through my stuff. My phone would be there. My book. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like here. contained resort kind of thing? Sort of, but not really, because it's like the resorts are all next to each other, so yeah. you can just walk along the beach to the next resort. So, yeah. I mean, I guess I, I, I way mean, more trustworthy weird, than yeah. here. Kind of like, you get that weird honor system thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever done... Actually, you know, when we were in high school, we had like a... Not like a timeshare type deal, but like similar type deal where we would go down to the resorts in Cabo. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then... I think those were all inclusive, except for alcohol. Yeah, this had alcohol, too. It was inclusive with mm-hmm. alcohol, yeah. I don't know. I guess that was fun when I was in high school, but... I definitely didn't, like, drain the bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was still just... Just take advantage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they make money off of that. They wouldn't offer that if they didn't net a profit yeah. off of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The the way I... Like, recently, I've been traveling. Obviously, the first time I went to Europe was a complete disaster because there was one plan, and then I was still a raging drunk, and I fucked that plan up. Mm. So I basically went there with no plan. Um... And then every other time I've traveled, ki- I use Kayak for all my airfare and booking now. And Kayak has a feature where you can type in where you're flying from and you can go to a map of Europe and there's prices on each city. And it'll kind of tell you where's the cheapest place to fly, like places like Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Istanbul, um, like with the bigger airports, Milan, stuff like that are cheaper to fly into. So usually if you can fly into there and then figure out a train system from there, you can, that's how I figure out how to afford it. Now it used to be, I'd pick where I'd want to go and just pay for the ticket and then realize I could have gone one city over for like $400 cheaper. So the way I do it now is I go to the map and I look at where's cheap to fly into and then I pick that city and then I plan my trip from there. That's the affordable way to do it. And then I Airbnb. And then once you're in, like, if you're going to Europe, trains are easy. And then if you're going to Australia, have you ever been to Australia? Not yet. It's once you're there, it's so cheap to fly in country because you can't drive anywhere. It's fucking huge. But there's only like four cities in Australia. (laughs) Let me drive to Perth. (laughs) Yeah. So even flying from like Sydney to Melbourne is like $40. I feel like when I go to Australia, I want to have the time to be there for like three weeks. Yeah, you need it. Because the first the first time yet. I went it was for three weeks, <clears throat> and then you can just kind of like city hop around the the perimeter, and then once you're there, once you're like getting to city city is really cheap. I love the whole idea of traveling, and I love every bit of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love the airport, waiting yeah. in the airport, watching people. Yeah, even mm. when it's miserable at the time, you kind yeah. of like you get that weird fondness for it. Yeah. yeah, it's I just love it. I love the airplane. I don't always love being cramped, but I love the experience. I've never had, I've had one experience where I've met a stranger on an airplane and made out with him. I've done that. <laughs> I've talked to maybe five people in all of my time, like actual conversations. Mm-hmm. I don't have as many interactions with people that I'm sitting next to as I wish to have. Yeah, I mean, you also need to decide if that person looks like they'd be fun to talk to. Yeah, but I think they think I'm not fun to talk to. That could be it, too. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly like we're approachable looking people. Yeah, I, although, <laughs> I don't remember where. I think coming back from the Dominican, I had a very older gentleman next to me. And then, or no, his wife was next to me and he was on the other side. Yeah. And he kept trying to talk to me and she was like not happy at all that he was talking to me. And you could just tell how uncomfortable she was. That I'm was trying interesting. I even think... the. When I flew, yeah, I feel like I just fucking sleep or I mm. pay the money to fly first class and then you got to, you lay down, mm-hmm. which is tight too. But uh, I don't know. I've Have you ever had any bad travel experiences in any certain place? Like airplane wise? Like I just, had in Istanbul? <laughs> no. Mm-mm. I've never pretty much been able to figure out whatever was going on and do yeah. something fun. I mean, I've only had like hiccups with flights. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I've never even had weird, sketchy flight stuff. I mean, I, you've traveled alone a lot. That's I think I've mainly traveled alone. Yeah, I mean, for me, it seems to be 50-50. And I've never, I've gone to a lot of sketchy places, I feel. And the only time I've ever had an issue was being alone in Istanbul. Yeah, that was weird. The whole thing was weird. Like Ugh. It was a weird time for you. Yeah. And it was, it was a weird all, choice. It was a weird time in my life. But I that's the only hang up with the whole kayak situation where you're looking for cheap places to go i flew to budapest had the best week ever budapest is the coolest fucking place i've ever been ever like hands down like nothing even comes close maybe iceland but budapest was so cool and then i made the decision to fly to istanbul because it was the cheapest option and i went to istanbul and then that that bombing happened about two days before i got there and all those people got blown shit and i stayed i could see see it out my window like there was a big hole in the ground like I stayed right so there crazy. it was next to all like the uh, mosques and stuff Being and then worse now. when I was there it's almost like they knew I had to have been scared 
It was very weird because I got cornered by the security guards. Well, they're probably in the trying mosque. to figure out where the fuck you're there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, I don't, I don't know I what mean, I was thinking. Like they're the most Western friendly. They're like on the cusp. I mean, they're going to probably get kicked out of the European Union from yeah. all the coup shit that happened a couple months ago. But well, even before I went, people told me that like Turkish people are are very open. Yeah. curious people and they ask mm-hmm. a lot of questions people mm-hmm. said they're going to ask you questions and you might find it offensive but they're just genuinely they're not trying to be rude they're, they, if they want to know an answer to something they're just, just going to ask, ask you most so, of the Middle East loves like America yeah and so they were very nice I'll say that much they were very nice they were just overly forward with me mm-hmm. and I, there was a couple of times where I got you know grabbed or groped or, or so cornered. basically I could be Turkish is what you're saying yeah there you go so that issue in the <laughs> mosque and then the second time I got scammed on a rug <laughs> That was you have the too. worst luck with rugs, <sighs> but that's besides the point. Why are you obsessed with rugs? That's the first. I just point. love rugs, man. It's I got this weird, weird rug fetish. It's weird because there's only so much room for I've rugs. I got the cow rug, Donovan. Remember, and mm-hmm. we didn't have room for it in the apartment in New York City, so right face hung it on the wall. I was just gonna say it that though. I feel badass. like I feel like Donovan's gonna have to go back on the wall because of the dogs. Yeah, Donovan. It looks cool on the wall. Yeah, it looks really cool. We just don't have the wall space at the new house for it. Hang it that way. Mm. We have lots of windows. Yeah, so I have the cow rug. <laughs> and then I bought a rug when I was in Morocco, which was easily the when I got scammed hard. They made up a story about the rug. And at this, I was going through this really weird, like what I thought was a spiritual rebirth. And this, I thought the rug was like speaking to me. And they basically fed me a bunch of bullshit. And I bought into it. And I bought a rug that was way too expensive. And then I found out they made the whole thing up. That's what happened in Africa. And then in Turkey, I told the guy I went through a previous rug scam. And then got scammed again. <laughs> yes. Damn it. <laughs> he told me he was ringing me up in Turkish lira and he rang me up in American dollars. So I ended up paying $1,000 for the rug when I thought I was paying 300 See, and the thought of buying something that big somewhere just devastates my soul. I do not wish to travel with that much stuff or have to maneuver that and figure out how to get it back on the plane and all of that. Like that's how we're so different. Like we're, I rather go with it. I would like to go with as little as possible and come back with as little as possible. See, the only thing I buy those mugs and rugs, baby. (laughs) I do. I collect coffee mugs. So I have to buy a mug every single place I travel. Mm -hmm. And I got her one from the Dominican, but I left it somewhere. (laughs) It's all right. Ben got me one from Prague. I had a built-in spoon. What? Mm -hmm. Ben got me one from Prague and then mm-hmm. broke it before he even got back to the venue. Makes so, sense. Yeah, sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they don't travel well. They don't travel. It's the stupidest thing in the world I could possibly collect being a uh, world traveler. And to live with. Oh, yeah, you should see our fucking mug. <laughs> even Ryface, that's when I started collecting them was when we lived in New York. We've got like two mug covers. <laughs> We don't Four <laughs> shelves full of mugs. And then she's At like, you guys drink coffee. Look what I got. And she comes home with five more mugs. One for Christmas. each of us. I was like, I got for, each for each of us. <laughs> it's because you want more mugs. <laughs> Let's be real. I got five <laughs> Christmas mugs so everyone has a Christmas mug to drink out of at the same time. Hmm. I drooled. That's sexy. That was a lint. So yeah, I, the only thing I collect is mugs. And I don't even really collect rugs. I just have acquired many rugs from lots of places. This is true. It's not really a collection thing. I'm not going to buy a mug. If I can, tra- I don't mug. like to travel during the cold season because of the amount of stuff you have to bring. But I hate it. that's why in the cold season you go south. Like we're going to South Africa in. Yeah, but sometimes you just have to go where it's cold. Yeah. I don't know. If you travel south in the wintertime here, you're going to summertime. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't see the northern lights if you don't want to go to the cold. Right. Exactly. We or the southern a, lights. Yeah, we didn't get us. Is there really southern lights? Yeah. Yeah. For real? It's yeah. like the opposite of Aurora Borealis? Yeah, it's Aurora Australialis. Get the fuck out. Seriously. Are you sure? I swear to God. God damn it. But you would have to see them in their summertime, right? Because uh, their summer's their cold. Uh, it'd be summertime for us. So it's summertime for them right now. Right. Huh. But um, but yeah, you want to you want to be in their winter. Yeah, I don't know. We went to we went to Iceland in the middle of December a couple of years ago, and the sun didn't come up till eleven thirty, and it was gone at like four. Mm-hmm. But I love that. Yeah, but if you're trying to like see waterfalls and glaciers and shit, I love it. I couldn't see. Fu- Whoa, that's fucking cool. 
Is it always shaped in a ball? Oh, wait, that's the earth. Yeah, yeah. That's well, we're cool. planning our next trip as we sit here. Oh, we're going to London. We London. are going to London. We're going to London. And that'll be like a, how, what kind of, that'll be like a work slash play. I mean, we have to work. Yeah. So basically, We'll be gone for like 10 days, right? There's, yeah, we're going to have to be. There's a, the first ever LGBT powerlifting meet. LGBT, like, it's marketed as that. In mm-hmm. London, that's being put on the, is it called the Gay Games? I don't want to fuck this up. I what I what is the Olympics quote. for the gays? Is it called the gay the games? The gay games. Okay. This guy. She looks at me because I should know everything. <laughs> <laughs> there's this there's the gay game. It's basically the gay Olympics, right? Don't quote us on this because I know I should know more factually about this, but I'm assuming yes. Okay. So the guy that helps put those on, his name's Chris, he's putting on the first ever LGBT powerlifting meet, and it's in London. And Chris, if you're listening to this, I did email you, and you yeah. haven't responded. Just a little, um, little reminder. So I believe Chloe's going to compete. I'm going to p- compete in my very first powerlifting meet. Yes. I'm not going to compete. I'm going to – maybe I, he did ask me about refing, maybe. Hmm. And are we going to do a little merch booth? Or? Yeah, we're going to have a little D&DL merch booth, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing we have coming up. And then the weekend after that is... The biggest pride... Is it the Paris Pride Parade? This is what we were told. Yes. Yeah. So we were going to stay the duration. So the whole thing in the middle is like a big combination of work and play. Yeah. It'll be fun. That's 10 days. Tight. Yeah. yeah. I've never been... London's the biggest. I, I've, I've, I had my worst FOMO in London because it's so big. You can't see everything, and it's really hard to navigate and get around. I'm not like a big fan of the super touristy stuff, Me but neither. isn't that where that big thing is? Big Ben. Yeah, big Ben. Oh no, the eye. The wheel the thing. Ferris wheel. Oh yeah. yeah. But that's all. It's very all close to each that's other. That's all right by each other. See, I would like to do that thing. So you have like old London and new London. Yeah. Like side by side. It's it geographically. I know some people there. Like, like, think of how small New York City is geographically. Mm-hmm. You can you can walk New York City in half a day, like over and up. London is just is more like LA. Yeah, even worse. But and it's like city. It's like dense city. But we took a boat all through the river, which was really cool. So we got to see like you go past the eye and you see the London Bridge. And you I feel see... like we should just get with some people that are really gonna help us perfect our accents. Oh God! Yeah, but they have like I just like sounding like, like Monty Python though. <laughs> yeah, they have like a ton of accents, just like mm. Ameri- like like anywhere. Yeah, yeah. you can do like, like the uh, when like I lived Cockney. in Sweden yeah. and trying to learn Swedish, and you have your plethora of friends, and everyone has a different dialect. Mm-hmm. I just fucking it's the worst. I'm the worst at languages. It's like being on the East Coast and saying hella. Hella. Mm-hmm. Or wicked. Or they pop. say wicked. Wicked awesome. Everything. Wicked awesome. It's wicked cold. I don't speak English that well, but I write it well, I think. What? English. English? Yeah. You should just go to London and See, I feel do like a I write New York accent. Speak. That's what I just said. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sometimes I speak well if I know what day it is and where I'm at. But usually Which is I'm not often. A, usually I'm on another planet. Mm-hmm. Um, what else about travel? We didn't really ask anybody for any questions. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, the way, like, so the other thing too is people are like, how do you afford it? I actually save for it. I have a certain account that I take 10% out of every paycheck and stick it into my travel fund. Um, and sometimes it gets used and sometimes it doesn't. Like, like this year I was supposed to go to Vietnam and then I felt like my knee exploded, so that didn't happen. So I just put it back in there and now it's going towards South Africa type thing. I just make it work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to travel, you can make it happen. Yeah. Because I know some broke-ass motherfuckers, and they can travel. Yeah. And it comes down to just, do like you know, like, pricing out your airfare. You can go on Kayak and create price alerts, and Kayak will mm-hmm. tell you if you should buy or not. So if you, like, if you plan you want to travel, like, three months out in advance, you do your airfare one month, you book the Airbnb one month, and then, you know, stuff like that. But I also had that huge change jar that I had for the whole year, and at the end of the day, I put any single dollars in it and change in. Save, like, 300 bucks into that, which is... I also don't like to travel with actual currency, like, paper currency. It's not my favorite thing to do. Really? I'll get a little bit of money when I'm there just to have a little, like, cash, but I don't like to travel with large amounts of money, and I found a great credit card with a low interest rate that has no international Fees. charges, which is huge because a lot of cards charge you, what is it, 10%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%, 
of your purchase. Yeah, and then and then the fees for like the exchange rate, and which is like which two dollars like, a transaction, which varies yeah. literally constantly. See, that's another thing we differ in huge. I bring X amount of American dollars with me, and I convert it when I get to the airport, and I, that's my budget. For see, I would trip. be obsessively checking my pockets and wherever I had well, it. Well, the other thing stash, too is another I'd thing freak. to I'd look for on the Airbnb is somewhere with a safe, or if you're staying yeah. in a hotel, you mm-hmm. have a safe. So I never like when we went to Costa Rica this year, we we stayed at like a fucking ridiculous resort type thing because Airbnb looks sketch as fuck all over Costa Rica. It was like shanties. Ugh. Um, and I just kept all the money I'd, in the I'd safe. I'd do that. I would do that. Oh, I bet God. the food would be so good. The mm. food there was insane. That was tight. But yeah, that's for another thing where we differ huge. Like I need to set a budget for myself and I will say, okay, I have $1,100 to spend on this trip and that is it. But you need to see it. That's how I am. Yeah. yeah, she needs to see it. I can just know. No, I yeah, I have no concept of anything that needs to be stored here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes this is true. Yeah, that's another area where we differ huge. Um, yeah, I don't know. So the other thing with travel too is people always ask like, oh, how do you train and eat? I don't give a stop. F- well, up, there's been a damn. few. I've been in a few weird situations where. When I went to Croatia, I had a powerlifting meet about, like, two weeks after I got back. So on that trip, I did have to make it to the gym, but I did the bare minimum. And, like, I actually talked to my coach, and I said, if I'm I'm just going to bench, I'm not going to do any accessory work. I'm not going to do any conditioning. Like, and he, you know, told me, like, okay, if you want to do more on any certain day, you could get away with just going to the gym twice, but it's going to be a shitload of volume. So I just talked to him about it, and we made it work. Um, but it seems like every time I've traveled, I don't, the last thing I'm fucking worried about is a finding a gym and B trying to track macros. Like you're seeing the world. The last thing. What the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) Yeah. I don't really, I don't really work out when I travel. When I went to the Dominican, I did like one workout on the beach. All that money to like just be in a gym. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. If you're not visiting some world-class place. Yeah. Like, if I went to Iceland and the mountain was like, hey, you want to work out? I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even when we went to Iceland with Matt, we went to Jockable because I wanted to go to Jockable because that's, like, one of the most famous gyms in the world. We went one time, got to meet all those guys, and then we didn't work out again once the whole time we were there. Yeah, and, like, tracking food while you're traveling, I mean, is it that important? Is it that important in the grand it shouldn't be. scheme of things? Right. Like, especially if you're traveling for 8 to 16 hours in one day. Yeah. You're going to track all that shit? Yeah, and then... Who's going to track that? Even, like, once you get there, think about... I mean, every, every culture you go to is going to have its own type of food, and, like, that's part of the fun of traveling is experiencing that. And so... The last thing I've ever worried about traveling is, oh, I need to. And you know what? Unfortunately, the first time I went to Europe, I went with two people who were very overly concerned with training and eating. And they spent half of our day, almost every day, looking for a gym. Yes. And then getting there. And I would go do my own thing. And then they'd get better. I'd do my own thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you are trying to lose a huge amount of weight and that is like your goal, you know what I mean? And that's like because for your mental stability. That's different. Yeah, you know what I mean? But go to Europe and walk around. Yeah. Right, exactly. There's a billion ways. I just you couldn't can go to South I couldn't America. ignore right. the delicious foods. Hike go hike you know what I mean? Machu yeah. Picchu. Go yeah. like there's right. there's active things to do everywhere. Like even if, if you're in Europe, you're walking around a ton. If you're in you Australia, there's so much like, you know, beach stuff, water stuff. There's a ton to do. you can even just walk around a ton there too. I mean, there's stuff to do everywhere. My friend Zach went to South America for, I think, I can't remember the time. It's been a long time. But um, without trying, he lost more than 20 pounds because they were waking up every day, going out and doing shit. And then essentially they were eating like one and a half times a day, Yeah, like eating a snack and then like not really eating much. Just because they were busy. Yeah. So they're out like living their life. So you're you're gonna just if you're trying to lose weight and everything, you're gonna expend the calories yeah. living instead of uh sitting around obsessing about like, oh I ate an extra pearl of couscous. I so eat like, everything. <laughs> I eat everything when I travel. I love all the foods. 
I ate five extra grains of rice. What do I do? Yeah, I don't know. People get too, I mean, like, you should go. And, like, have an open mind, too. Because, like, the worst is if you're a picky eater and you don't want to, like, open yourself up to trying the foods that are in that culture. Yeah. Like, I know you hate spicy food, but I also know that if you're in a foreign country and that's part of the cuisine, yeah. you're open to trying it? it. Right. Mm. And I think that too many people get way too hung up on, like, their shitty American diet. And it's like, that's part of the whole thing. Like, go experience, like, immerse yourself in other countries' cultures. Learn about go to museums. Go pay money to go to museums because by doing that you're directly supporting the economy of the place you're visiting so people can continue to visit there safely. Yeah. It's another thing too, is like you can't be super, super, super cheap when you travel too. Like you need to support the economy you're visiting. Yeah. That's like with anywhere you go. Plus eating the food and not eating your shitty American yeah, diet. Yeah, don't go look for a McDonald's or don't <laughs> Like that people, way you're saving the earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know people who are, you know, want to, like, go look for certain chains that they know are there. Uh, it's like, just go to some fucking little shitty mom and pop place. And if you get sick, you get sick. Well, that's like in New York. <laughs> that's like in New York. You have, like, Olive Garden and Red Lobster and shit like that in the middle of Times Square. Because it's just like. That's what people know. Well, but yeah, you know because too? like you that's know, what that's foreigners just, want to come eat in the yeah, states. Yeah, exactly. That's that's really what it is. Yeah, and it's just like you get all the Americans being like, "Oh, there's a TGI Fridays in Olive Garden, Times Square." It's like, yeah, because people coming from fucking the Middle East or Japan or anything like that that are coming to the biggest tourist attraction it's, probably in the country at Times Square want to eat a TGI. I've never Fridays. been there. Times, Times Square. Square. Hmm. It's, There's nothing about it that it's drawn me. It's there. impressive. It's, like sh- it's shiny lights. Yeah, it's impressive the first like <laughs> time you see it or so. Like there was a couple times where I'm like, this is super fucking impressive, but it's such a clusterfuck. It's just kind of like it's I had a lot of fun sensory like, overload. Uh, Matthew Millions and I like wandered up there at like 3 a.m. one time, and that was super cool. Yeah, because it's mostly empty, and then you kind of go like. Oh, like this is all the like you kind of orient yourself like oh like there's where they do the ball drop, and oh I've seen this on TV, um, like they had the the first year we moved there like we'd been there for two months and they had the Super Bowl at uh, Giant Stadium, mm-hmm. um, MetLife Stadium, which is in Jersey, but they were doing all the broadcast stuff in the middle of Times Square, so that was kind of cool. Yeah, like, wander over and you're like oh I see you motherfuckers. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Am I on TV? Like, hey, parents, am I on TV? Like, <laughs> stupid shit like that. Yeah, I but, just don't uh, know. I'm not drawn and, to but, it. But, you know, like, even just, uh, it's whatever. I'm also before, not drawn to areas with lots of people. You know, before I lived there, out. like, it used to be, like, a weird, like, oh, I want, like, one of my bucket list items is, like, uh, I'm going to spend New Year's in Times Square. <laughs> then I got there. And it's yeah. like, this is, like... Now with security and everything, they don't let you do like ins and outs, which I don't know how you enforce that really, but they, you know, they interview people like they're literally wearing diapers so they can go to the bathroom. It's like, wait for what? For two years. years. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. And it's like, uh, ew, would you wear an adult diaper? (laughs) Would you rather? What if that was your fetish? (laughs) It says for a lot of people. I know. What would you do if the man of your dreams was just like, hey, I got this fetish? That he wants to be in a diaper? Yeah. And I have to change it? This is good travel talk. (laughs) Do I have to change it? I don't know. It's your question. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Is it the whole thing? Yeah, I don't know the whole thing about that fetish. (laughs) If it's the man that I loved. Do you want to know? Like, I could chime in. I mean,. I think I would support it. No kink it. shaming. <laughs> I would support it. I don't think there's anything Ben could throw at me where I'd be like, no. Nothing. I think I would support it. Support it or but not partake in it? I didn't say that. <laughs> Remember when we used to fight? Never mind, I'm not going to bring that up. <laughs> I don't want to turn this into fucking super inappropriate, sexy fucking... I'm just going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Remember Kaz used to start the conversation with, like, what would you do? Remember, he would ask, like, Jay or Sasser, what would you do if Cass wanted to, like, put a strap on on and just go to town on oh, you? Oh, yeah, like, the first night I met, like, all the brute athletes and, like, all these super famous CrossFitters. We were all <laughs> sitting in the room going, like, hey, man. Like, they asked <laughs> It Jer, was, like, Sam Dancer. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, hey, like, 
if like you, you if know, your you're wife. married, you're married, you know, and after 10 years, your wife comes to you and she's like, listen, like my fetish is that, you know, I just really want to peg you. <laughs> Would you Jer, do it? And Jer he was, was like, Jer was, Jer was like, so down. He's like, Jer's yeah, like, hey, yeah you know, like it. if I had a starter dick, I think I could work up to like a full size strap on in about three months. I'd be totally cool with it. He's like, I love Cassie to death. Do anything for her. Yeah. See, that's when you know. Yeah, but some guys are just like, I don't want to actually, we're not having this conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> this will be another, another podcast. Another podcast. Tickle, tickle. We'll, go, we'll go back to traveling. Yeah. So I don't know. Like for me, basically I have a list of like a bucket list of places and like South Africa has been on my list for a couple of years now. It's really expensive to fly there. So mm-hmm. I kind of check pricing monthly. And I told myself once the flights got down below a thousand dollars, I was just going to book it and go because they're, I mean, sometimes they're 1500, 1600, 1700. That's and that for airfare, especially if you're flying two people is unaffordable for the most part. Yeah. I think when I booked my trip to South Africa, I paid like 1450 and then you got to take the trip cause I got sick Six years ago, I was supposed to go to South Africa. And you paid fourteen fifty for your flights. Mm-hmm. I paid eight hundred for each flight, so I've got almost two flights for what yeah. you paid one for. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and that getting to South Africa for eight hundred sixty dollars from fucking the West Coast is like unheard of. I was also going by myself, but weren't and you going to go to Johannesburg? What were you going to yes. do? Yes, that's. So I was sketchy. going by myself, and then after I didn't go, so many people told me that that was probably one of the stupidest things I could have done. But I think I would have been fine. I think. <laughs> but I have a friend that lives there that says I probably wouldn't have been fine. She said that would have been really Yeah, stupid. Johannesburg sketch. I mean, I don't know. That's, um, hold on. I'm texting Alex about, we're releasing the LO stuff soon. Ooh, yay, surprise. Here we go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what I did first. I just booked the airfare because the pricing was finally there, uh, and then I knew I wanted to go south because I didn't want to go somewhere freezing cold when it's already freezing I cold. I just really here. want to see the penguins. Yeah, they're everywhere. And then from there, I did the Airbnb and I priced it out. You can even put like your budget into Airbnb and it'll only show you things that are in your budget. Airbnb is fucking tight. And then now, I mean, that's kind of all we need to pay for. Trips paid for. And then we'll just continue. I'm, I'm setting like 5% out of each paycheck aside for spending money when I get there. See, that's kind of how I would travel, too. That's what originally drew me to South Africa was, like, the penguins. Yeah, the, see? And I'll be like, I'll go to see the penguins and then make everything else fall in place. Yeah, I have just wanted to go there. Actually, you know what? When, when I used to, when I was down in Australia the first time, all those dudes, the rugby dudes I was hanging out with were flying to South Africa for, to Cape Town for a rugby match. And they showed me, like, pictures, and I saw Table Mountain. And it, they showed me a picture where they went to Table Mountain, and there was fog that day, and they were, like, above it. Mm. And I saw, and I was like, "That's fucking cool!" Like I didn't realize all that. So it's like the hiking is a huge draw for that area, and then food, and there's so much culture there, African culture. Yeah. And it's interesting too because South Africa is kind of like a melting pot of lots of di- like they've got Africa, Australia, England. You know, kind of like how the states is a melting pot. It's like I really want to go to Italy. It's yeah. been on my list for years, and I don't know why I just haven't done it. Mm-hmm. But I just should probably do it. Yeah. But it's like I want to go to Italy and Sicily, a couple other places. And all that. But I just haven't had that one little thing to push me over the edge to book the trip. Yeah. And I don't know when that will happen. Doesn't mean yeah. I don't want to go any less. I just the haven't timing, done it yet. Timing's important too. Yeah. You know, like. Especially. And that's probably something that I don't want to do alone, or it is something that I don't want to do alone. And it I'd makes it. Go and with also, someone. it also makes it, our lives are kind of. At the point where you and I can't do things together anymore. No, I mean, I, was, I, mean, I was looking no, at a screenshot earlier. <laughs> I found that and saved it. <laughs> this is just of somebody oh that her boyfriend is really into adult diapers, and he yeah, looks we're swinging like a, back to diapers. He looks like a child. Is... He looks like he's about nineteen. I just like the first comment. <laughs> hmm. I mean, read read the caption and give us a description. For those that read it out loud, hell yeah! (sighs) (laughs) This is a screenshot. My boyfriend Jared is the love of my life. We have or had plans to get married. Last night, I was looking through his phone, 
for a friend's number, and I found this pic below of him. <laughs> Sent to a man. <laughs> what should I do? And it's a picture of Jared. He looks to be about 19 to 23 on the 19th side. Justin Bieber hair swooped in front of his face, blonde. Super very, emo. Super emo. Yeah, very emo, very wispy. And he's wearing a he's wearing an adult diaper. <laughs> Taking a selfie. One nipple exposed. <laughs> the diaper appears to be full. Uh, it's really poofy in the front, not like a sexual genital poofy, but full of urine. Maybe. Yeah. What if that's, um, is that part of the fetish? She doesn't. I, yeah. The oh, yeah. Shit. Cause you have to have someone clean it. Wow. Like take care of you. That's wild. I just, I don't know. Which, which, I which side know. would you rather be on than that? Wow, okay. <laughs> what are we looking at now? Kaz posted a thing where person, it looks like it's like a, is that Reddit? I don't understand Reddit. Uh, that looks I like don't Tumblr. know. I don't like understand what? Reddit like at Tumblr. all. I have Somebody no idea asked, what Reddit is. It a, is it illegal to have sex in a dressing room? And someone answered, I've gotten in trouble for jerking it in one. So, and the person said, but is it illegal? And the second person said, I jerked off in a dressing room. Do I sound like a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> Which has nothing to do with traveling, but yeah, anyways. here we are. I don't know. Traveling's tight. You should do it. You should, you know, there's always, if it comes down to a money thing, there's, you just need to plan to save for it or plan to like finance it out in a certain way. Yeah. There's so many areas in your life that unless you're just really, really struggling, you can just make cuts. For me, it's, I mean, coffee sure. and I was just going to say, if you're Use spending, somebody else's Netflix. if you're spending yeah. $5 a day on coffee and let's just say that's Monday through Friday, that's $25 times four. It's a hundred dollars a month. You could save a year. by not doing that. Yeah. That's make your trip. own fucking coffee at home. Yeah. That's you just bought your plane ticket by not buying Starbucks. Yeah. I mean, little, Seriously. little sacrifices like that are like, I don't, I'm, I'm guilty of buying shit. I don't need at the grocery store. Like, Snacky mm -hmm. stuff, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we, especially if we go to the grocery store, hungry. Uh, I've been really mindful about like the kind of the manic phases I get in, where I'm like, oh man, I want to like. Yeah. yeah. I've been like tempering that back, and I have a lot more money. Yeah. Just yeah. Ever since you know what I've frenzy, also noticed. Don't notice? online shop. Don't go on into it. Yeah, and you know what I did in November? A... I did no shop November. And the only things I bought were I, I literally did not buy a fucking thing I didn't need. The only things I bought were those. Backpacking chairs because they were half off at REI. And then I got some fucking socks and underwear, which I think is fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Well, let's not talk about what happened on the 28th. Yeah, I mean, bad. I think I'm the most frugal. Oh, is that a joke? <laughs> is that a fucking no, joke? No, I meant it seriously, but then once I said it, you looked at me wait. like that. Jesus then Christ. Then I had to... <laughs> No, you're not the most up. frugal. <laughs> but I back. feel like I rash, I, I do take a step back from overspending in the moment. Yeah, which I've been doing recently too. Which is, and I can't really ask my best friend if I'm making the right decision because she's a big overspender. Are you talking about me? <laughs> I just get really excited. Here's my, I don't, I, I, I was raised by people who are completely opposite. We have my father who, okay, we have my father who, uh, Spend, spend, spends. He's Mr. I don't need a savings account. Take, can't take my money with me when I die. And then we have my mom, who's one of the most frugal people on earth. So it's weird because I feel like I'm completely divided. I go through bursts. Like when I have a new hobby, oh, it's, it's, your money's it's out the window. fucking game on. But like I don't, I'm not huge like into shopping or into. I'll take shopping risks. Like I really needed snowshoes. Yeah. And I didn't buy, didn't buy, and then I found some at Costco. Yeah. Who knows? They might be shit, but they were only 60 bucks, and Costco is so fantastic that if they are horrible, I can return them. Right. That's another place you and I differ. So, like, I didn't spend $200 on them, and who knows? I could fucking hate it. <laughs> Snowshoeing? I mean, I probably will love it, but... Yeah, So I try, I try to wait. I try to play the gambling game with shopping. Yeah. I think we're now, off. Now we're we talking. Have, yeah, we're off topic. We're off topic. So I think we should say right, goodbye. We're gonna say bye because we're doing that thing where we stray from the conversation. Toodaloo. Stay tuned for this the podcast. Next podcast. Change your diapers. By nothing. Yeah. What? Change your diapers. <laughs> Fuck. Bye. Toodaloo. Bye. <laughs>